of normality, Dr. Walter Schuert of the Bell Laboratories developed the concept of statistical process control charts in around 1920s. Control charts, which are also referred to as Schuert charts, are nothing but a simple statistical tool to determine if a process is in the state of statistical control or not. The only perspective of using a control chart is to identify whether the process is within control or it is not. And each time you are looking at the control chart, you must understand that control chart is nothing but an extension of the run chart and that it includes a statistically generated upper and lower control limits. You must understand that when I am referencing to run chart, I essentially mean that control charts are also time series charts. So whenever you are building control charts, you must always understand that data that you are using to build the control charts must always be time series data. When you have continuous or variable data, control charts that are built come in pairs. One control chart which studies the average of the performance, another which measures the variability of the performance. For continuous data, you will always have a pair of control charts. For discrete data, you are looking at either defect or defective and you are building control chart to understand whether your defect or defective are within control or not. Now let's look at all of this in detail. Like I was mentioning, the only usage of a control chart is that it provides graphical statement to see if a process is operating in a state of statistical control or not, which means it will help you identify if there is any special cause variation in the process. Whenever you see a, even a single data point going outside the control limits, upper or lower control limit, that particular data point is considered to be driven by special cause variation. Statistics mandates that you must conduct root cause analysis of the same and corrective actions be taken. Are we OK so far? Yes, sir. Yes. So whenever someone asks you a question, why are control charts built for a very? The answer is very simple that they are built to verify whether a process is behaving in a state of statistical control or not. And to check whether there is existence of or the presence of special cause variation in the process. Whenever there is special cause variation in the process, statistics mandates that you must conduct root cause analysis. And take corrective actions. To prevent it. Are you OK? Yes, One sir. of the biggest disabilities of control chart is that it does not consider specification limit. You may recall in our earlier discussions that we were discussing the concept of specification limit. Specification limit are mostly provided to you by your customer. Sometimes they are self imposed. As a promise of your offering, you are providing for targets to yourself which the customer will hold you accountable for. They have not decided the 30 minute delivery time for Domino's. It is a self imposed target, but now that you have promised that to the customer, it becomes your specification limit also. And sometimes these uh, specification limits are provided to us by the law of the land. Any data point going outside the specification limit. Is the area of defect? Is the area where? Performance is not acceptable. But you should realize that one of the biggest disabilities of control chart is that it does not consider the specification limit. When you are looking at building the control chart instead of LSL and USL. Control charts are decided by the data itself. 
when you collect data most statistical softwares calculate your upper control limit and lower control limit from the data itself and control limits are not provided to the to, to us by our customer and they actually represent the process performance especially in your interviews you will be asked this question sometimes what is the difference between specification limit and control limit i hope uh, you now understand the difference yes sir whenever you see variation in the process and that variation is within the normal distribution curve that is considered to be driven by common cause variation and just in case if you see any data point going outside the curve outside the control limits that is referred to as special cause also referred to as assignable cause like the term itself is saying assignable cause would mandate that you assign a cause to it by conducting root cause analysis and make provisions to take corrective action when you are looking at continuous data like i was mentioning the control chart for continuous data always exist in pairs if you have single subgroup data you can make a control chart referred to as imr individual and moving range chart if you have subgroup size greater than 1 but less than 9 you can use the x bar r chart and if you have subgroup size greater than 2 you also have the option of using x bar r chart so let's say i have captured process performance data let's say i have productivity data which is continuous i am i produce uh, like in your case uh, you produce chemicals which which are measured in liters if i have y which is continuous data and have captured the data in time series if i am looking at assessing the process performance overall then i will use a, a control chart referred to as imr chart individual and moving range chart if i have my subgroup size greater than 1 and less than 9 i will use a control chart referred to as x bar r chart so let's say i have productivity data from five different machines or five different lines i have five subgroup data and if i want to do a comparative study vis-a-vis -vis control charts then i will use the control chart of x bar r or x bar s in the subsequent discussions i will be able to point out to you with uh, on how do you choose whether x bar r is better or x bar s is better we are okay so far yes sir and like i was mentioning whenever you are looking at control chart for continuous data they always exist in pairs so the name that i mentioned individual and moving range the first part is individual which is your mean chart the other is the moving range which is the variation chart similarly x bar is a average chart while r is the range or variation chart x bar s you have x bar chart which is the mean chart and standard deviation chart which is the study of variation let's pick up some data and now understand this so if you see here in my column c2 i have data on production which is in kilograms i also have date captured which means i have time series data let me delete some data points for better study now if i want to study the production data i go to stats control charts for individual i can either make imr together or i can make it separately i and mr you guys can see this 
I yes, choose sir. the first option IMR. Double click on production. Whenever you are building a control chart, it is always advisable to put a timestamp. So I, I click stamp and I added the date here. Press OK, press OK and your control chart is ready. Whenever you are studying control charts for continuous data, you must always start from the bottom chart, the variation chart. In this case, it is the moving range chart. So I have moving range chart. I don't see a single data point going beyond the red line, which is my upper and the lower control limit. And because I don't see a single data point going outside it, I will. I am OK now and I will move to the upper chart, which is the individual value chart. No data point here also going above the red line or below the red line. Hence, I will infer that data or the process is within control. You guys with me so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's try and understand this a little. Let's try and understand this. This is my date column and this is the production data for which I have built the IMR chart. What IMR chart is doing for the first chart, which is the individual value, which is the individual value chart, it is using the as is data. If you see your control chart also, you will have the same values of 200, 246, 222, etc., being depicted in your individual value chart. Look at the values here. Individual value 200, individual value 246, individual value 222. It is using the as is data to plot the control chart for individual value. It captures the mean of this data and statistically generated control limits. And plots your individual value chart. For the moving range chart. What it does is for consecutive data points, it captures the range value, the higher minus the lower. So for the first data point, you will not have any value. For the second one, my higher value is 246. The lower value is 200. So my moving range value is 46. Yes. Simple thought. Yes. Sir. Yes. For the next one, I have my higher value is 246 minus 222. So my moving range becomes 24. Next, I have a 256, which is higher. I have a 222, which is lower. So my moving range is 34. Using this logic, it will create a new data set for itself, which it will use to plot as the moving range chart. Moving range, like the term itself is saying, it is studying the movement or the variation of data between consecutive date stamps. Here in our case, these are separate days. So you are studying what is the variation between two consecutive days using this new data set, a, a control chart will be plotted, which is nothing but studying the variation in your data. We are OK so far, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I am looking at the other two, other two charts, the X bar R and X bar S, Look at the data here that we have for separate subgroups. I have six subgroups here and I can either use the X bar R or X bar S. Let's understand how do we make them. One chart that you will get is a X bar, R, X bar chart 
the other that you will get is the range chart. For X bar, what it is doing is it is calculating the average of that timestamp. For the first of Ju June, I have these six data points. I will calculate the average of the performance using this new data set. A control chart will be built, which is referred to as the X bar uh, uh, X bar chart. Similarly, the next chart that it will use is a range chart. For us to be able to calculate range, we will need two more data sets, minimum and maximum. So it will calculate the minimum in that particular time range and maximum in that slot. Range is nothing but highest or the maximum minus the lowest or the minimum. So a new data set is being created called the range. So one graph that you that you will get will be the X bar. The other will be the R. Now these two data sets will be used to construct a control chart. You guys with me so far? Yes. Let's draw this. Stats control charts for subgroup X bar R, X bar S. I choose all the data that I want to compare. Go to scale, put in the timestamp of the date that I had. Press OK. Your control chart is ready. Like I had advised, the first control chart you should see is the bottom chart, which is the variation chart, which in this case is the range chart. I have two data points in red color, which means that my process is not within control. Each time your process is not within control, you will have to go back to your subject matter expert and dig deeper as to why on those two particular dates. My business process has exceeded my upper control limit. It will require you to conduct root cause analysis. Fair. For the X bar S chart. Matrix of standard deviation. So for for the six data sets uh, subgroups that we have, it will calculate the standard deviation. You may note here that when I'm calculating range, it is only considering two data points, the highest and the lowest, while standard deviation is considered more sensitive to process variation. So when you are looking at identifying variation in your system, you can choose between X bar R and X bar S. You must realize that X bar R only considers two data sets. So let's say I have eight subgroup data. My X bar R chart will only consider two. The other six data points will not be considered. It will be neglected. While when I'm using a standard deviation chart, it will give me the variation in the system a little more minutely. Hence, a lot of practitioners are of the view that X bar R must not be used for larger samples, uh, larger subgroups. You guys with me? Yes, yes sir. sir. So much so that in yesteryears, X bar R was not prescribed for greater than three subgroups. It subsequently increased to a five. Then uh, now the newer minute I have has started to mention it up to nine or less than nine. But in reality, in the industry today, you will see X bar R more pre, uh, more prominent than the X bar S chart. I hope uh, the difference is clear to both of you. Yes, sir, absolutely. You should also note that when we build control charts, 
there are nine special tests that are possible. Let me first go back to my individual value chart. Stats, control charts, individual. And instead of building IMR together, I am now building I separately and MR separately. When you are conducting or making any control charts for continuous data, there are eight special tests that come into play. One is checked by default. There are other seven special tests that you may want to conduct. When you are studying for. Whether your process is within control or not. First one is already. Checked it says one point greater than K standard deviation from the central line where K stands for three. So, e, uh, so it is saying that if you have even a single point greater than three standard deviation from the central line, it shall be marked as special cause variation. It shall be marked as special variation in the process. Are you guys OK? Yes, sir. This is the preliminary thing that every control chart will check. The next point is K points in a row on the same side of central line. So let's say your production has a mean of 200 kilograms. And now you have nine consecutive data points could be nine days data. You have nine days data where your productivity has gone either above your mean or it has gone below the mean. If it, if it, it happens for nine consecutive days. It is considered as special cause variation. Are we together? Yes, yes. You must realize that if you have uh, data moving in one direction for nine days regularly, there is a high likelihood that your process mean will shift. Next, K points in a row all increasing or decreasing. Six. If you have six days data, either that your production is going up or that the production is going down. This is this in statistics is referred to as trend. So if you see trend in your data, it shall be considered as special cause variation. Next. K points in a row alternating up and down. You have 14 data points such that on day one you have production. Let's say around a 190. Next day it increases to around a 230. Third day it comes back to on around 190. Fourth day it goes up again to the same level around a 230 something. When you have data alternating up and down, that is referred to as oscillation in statistics. Presence of oscillation means that. Process. Is not within control and that there is presence of special cause variation. Are we OK so far? Yes. yes. Next K out of K plus one point greater than two standard deviation from the central line. If you remember the normal distribution logic, we said that plus minus two standard deviation should contain about 95% of the data. So outside the two standard deviation, you would roughly have around four and a half five percent of the data, correct? But here you are witnessing a situation that two out of three data point that you see has gone outside the two standard deviation. Within allow within it should have been 95 outside. It should have been five. So if I consider both sides, one sh side should have been 2.5 or a little less than that. The other side should have been 2.2.5 uh, or less than that. But in our case, it has become two by three. Two by three is about 66 67%. So if 67% of your data is going outside the two standard deviation, it has to be considered as a special cause variation. Are you guys clear with this? 
yes sir yes next point k out of k plus 1 where k is equal to 4 so 4 out of 5 data points greater than one standard deviation from the central line so if you are uh, recall the one standard deviation logic one standard deviation should contain 68% of the data which means only 32% is allowed outside the one standard deviation 16% on one side 16% on the other but here we have four out of five which is 80% if 80% of the data is going outside one standard deviation from the central line it is to be considered as special cause variation fair thought okay next k points in a row within one standard deviation of central line if i have 15 data points within one standard deviation of the central line this resembles a cluster and it shall be considered as special cause variation and finally k points in a row greater than one standard deviation from the central line so if you have eight data points greater than one standard deviation of the central from the central line either side that shall also be considered as special cause variation so what this eight special test do to you is if for your particular situation in your company if you want to check for these conditions check uh, click these tests press okay and it will check whether these conditions exist in the business process or not if they exist it is considered as special cause variability everyone okay sir another option that you have here which is uh, very regularly used is when you want to showcase before after performance let's say i have data from the 1st to the 15th of june this is my pre project data and the uh, data point after 15 june is the post project data and if i want to use the control chart to showcase this condition i can use i i will need to create another column and add pre here let's say post here if i want to showcase bifurcation as pre and post i go to i chart option i go to stages and i choose that stage that i've included press okay and my new control chart will have the bifurcation of before and after pre and post this is a very beneficial uh, element of the control chart can that can be used to represent your process if you want to showcase certain significant differences that may have occurred let's say you have two months data or inclusion of a newer machine and you want to showcase something some pilot that you've done you can now showcase pre post or, or break the data into uh, these two halves or these three halves as per your requirement where was the option i chart options stages we are okay so far yes you guys have your book handy you want to revise what we have discussed so far or should i proceed further yes sir we can proceed further okay
when we are looking at discrete data, there are four charts which are possible. One which is referred to as C chart, another one that is referred to as U chart, another one which is referred to as NP chart, and P chart. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, I think uh, we have already studied about this uh, NP and C and U like that. We have already studied that. Uh, we have taken the session for the same. Brilliant. So we have completed the control charts in that case. Right, right, right. Because you have given the exercise also, and no, we no, have... no, 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 sir, no, sir. I don't attend that session actually. So please uh, carry carry on with this. Okay, let's uh, let's. Uh, yeah. do... Let's do this. Not it will not take more than five seven minutes. Don't worry. Okay, okay. When you are when you have uh, discrete data, there are four charts possible. Set which is built for built when you have data on defects. Another set which is built when Infected. you have data on defects. If you have fixed audit sample. And if you have variable audit sample, that is how you choose. So let's say I have data from 1st June 2020. And as a engineer, every day I have looked at 25 cars. I work for Volkswagen and I have audited, checked 25 cars every day. And on day one, the number of defects that I found So if you see this example, my audit sample is fixed at a 25 and I have date, data on defects. In this case, I will build the C chart. If this audit sample weren't fixed, someday you have audited 25, the other day you have audited 28, third day you have audited 24. If the audit sample size is variable and you have data on defects, then you are building the U chart. So let me first consider the fixed audit size. I go to stats, I go to control chart, I go to attribute chart, I have C, my defect data, like I have always mentioned, whenever you are building control chart, try and, uh, try and put in the stamp, press OK, and you're done. Question that you should ask yourself, do you see even a single data point going outside the red line? If you don't see any data going outside the red line, you will say that, say that the process is within statistical control. Wahi, if I have a situation number two, where my audit sample size is variable. I will now use the U chart, stats, control chart, attribute chart, U chart, defect data, 
subgroup size is variable sample that I've built now. Press OK. Now you will see that the control limit is not a straight line. It is a zigzag line, largely because the, uh, the control limit will change basis the sample size. So whenever you are building a U chart, you will have the upper control limit and sometimes both the upper and the lower as a zigzag line. And this is how you are building the control chart. Similarly, when you have defective data, I can use the NP chart when I have fixed sample size. And I will build the other chart when my sample size is variable. The only difference that you will see is that the line, the control limits are, not, are now not a straight line. They have become zigzag because of the difference in the sample sizes. or defect and defective charts. The number of special tests that you have is only four instead of eight. This is for variation chart also. First one by default is greater than three standard deviation. Next one is K points in a row on the same side of central line. K points in a row all increasing or all decreasing. K points in a row alternating up and down. So you have cluster, you have trend, and you have oscillation. These are the eight, uh, four special tests. So when you are looking for continuous data also, the average chart will have eight special tests, while the variation chart will have four. For defect, defective data, you will have only four special tests that I showed you just now. Any questions so far? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, regarding this uh, chart, uh, what you are uh, taking the data is not having any uh, special uh, cause variation, right? Correct. Right. Even even why this chart is not having one sigma, two sigma, and uh, this is having the three sigma that is you are considered as a UCL. Why this if is you not? Add that, you can manually do that. So I okay. go to P chart option. I got okay. I go to S limit and I all I have to do is add one, two, three. No okay. comma and nothing in between. Press OK and you will get the line for one standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviation. Uh, sir, can you uh, once Close. again repeat that? Where, where you have taken that? So let's say I, I go to stats, control charts, individual. I am using the IMR chart now. Yes. I go to I chart option. Okay. The data is not there. Give me one second. Change the data set that I'm using. So I go to stats, control charts, I chart, I chart options, S limits. Okay. One, two, three. Another thing that you may want to know is uh, like I was mentioning specification limit is not part of your control chart. They are not an inherent part of your control chart. So if you want to add, let's, let me just remove these stages first. If you want to add a reference line or your specification limit, you can go to scale and there's a option of reference, chart, uh, reference lines. You can use reference lines as your specification limit. Let's say I have a specification given to me by my customer that my production should never be less than 210 kilograms. I've, add, I've added that, pressed OK, 
and a new line at 210 will be created. This is nothing but the lower control limit as provided to me by my customer. Yes, it's a clear, sir. I have recorded this session, so I will upload this video on YouTube and give you the link also. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I have uh, actually in our case now, what uh, we are doing that, uh, just I will just uh, give you one some something examples. Else is... Hello? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, in our case, uh, uh, that we are having the multiple subgroup like for uh, that is a uh, first column that is for the batch number one two three and uh, having uh, uh, three uh, three another column that is for test one that having the different limit test two having the different limit and uh, test three that having the different limit like that we have uh, uh, that such a data and we are uh, evaluating that uh, the uh, two sigma, three sigma, and uh, like CPK and C, uh, CPK values. Okay. So, uh, yes. So simple, sir. Can you just uh, explain key how can we take in a single uh, with a single snapshot that we have taken the multiple uh, graph we can get? You should not take multiple uh, multiple y's in the same unless okay. your uh, index is the same. If I if I draw, uh, these are five uh, six different machines. Yes, yes, if right, I, right. If I use there, if I use uh, that data to construct a, a I I chart, doable. Okay. No problem. Okay. Because their indexes are different. You you can see. Give me one minute. Let me change the reference uh, reference line. Let me go to the left. It will always be different. If I want to, want it to be on the same graph, you will have to ensure that the, the uh, this value here on the left side is absolutely the same. Only then will it makes a lot of sense. Are you with me? Should not measure a single process, uh, different matrices together in one control chart. You can so, compare them X bar R or X bar S, but don't study IMR, I for multiple together. That's not a good way of doing it. So uh, this is having the limitation for such a multiple graph really? in a single sort, right? Oh, OK, OK, OK. Now, whatever revisions you guys want, we can schedule it for Tuesday and Friday, and we can finish our Six Sigma black belt portion. Okay. One one lean is uh, having the cell. Yeah, yeah. So if you want, we can do lean on uh, coming Tuesday, and we can. Okay. Then right, get to the other sessions. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Catch you on Tuesday then. Unless you have some questions on control charts. We are good with control charts. Uh, Man. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, go through this uh, in your book as well and compile. If you have some questions, we can handle it on uh, on Tuesday. If you have some questions. OK, OK. So control chart is over now. Huh? Yeah. OK, OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Rajesh.
Reise, Gelenk.